I said what it said. So the healing process is, I've got to understand that I have to forgive. Because the energy and the focus and the time that I spend on hating the ones that hurt me, I take away from my ability to love God, first of all. The focus and attention and the place in my heart that I give to bitterness and unforgiveness, guess what? You begin to victimize other people and you don't even know it. You begin not to be the father you think that you be. You can't love your wife the way your wife deserves to be loved because you got your mind on someone that did something that you can't forgive. You can't love your children and your husband the way that you think that they ought to be loved. And in fact, the way God intends them to be loved because I've got a place in my heart that should belong to them that now I'm giving to somebody else. I'm really a slave to someone. I begin to let them dictate the terms of my existence. And so God said, forgive them so that you can become free to love not only me, but to love others as I intend for you to love. Amen? Amen? And so if we want to get to this place of spiritual, emotional, and economical wholeness and every other form that God would have us to be whole, we have to somehow summon the will to say, God, God I believe you to be who you say you are. I believe you to be able to, sit, to do what you said you can do. I know I don't feel that today, but as, but as an act of my will, I choose to forgive. I may feel the same way, but in my mind and in my spirit, Lord, I forgive. So that's the first step if we want to start the healing process. How many of us want to start the healing process today? How many of us are tired of walking around hurt? How many of us are tired of walking around fearful? How many of us are tired of walking around in the same old bondages that we've been in all these years. Amen? Amen? So the next step, we have to turn over our cares to God in prayer and leave them in his hands. In Matthew, Jesus said, come to me all who are heavy laden and are burdened. Amen? How many of you know that there's just some things you can't do? There's some things you just can't do. How many of you know that very often we're walking around playing God and we don't even know it? Amen? I'm trying to carry something God never even told me to carry. So what he's saying to me is, and what he's saying to all of us is, I want you to learn to come to me in prayer. When those people have hurt you, you don't stop and, and, and hold on to it. You don't stop and focus on them because you keep your eyes on me and I keep you in peace. You give it to me. You take it to God in prayer. So if we're going to go out and make a difference in our community, the first thing that we got to learn how to do is forgive and to love. And I can't do that if I can't forgive. As long as I cannot love everyone, I can't love anyone. Amen? So the process is now, the second thing is i got to learn to be prayerful. Because only through the prayers can our spirits, can God begin to shed his love abroad in our hearts. Prayer means communication between God and I. Amen? Between God and you. If we're not talking to God, if we're not opening ourselves up to God, then we're not putting ourselves in a position for us to come in and meet our healing needs. Amen? So the third thing I'm trying to go quickly here is we have to dedicate or rededicate our life to God. Amen? Amen? God is looking for service today, people. God is looking for someone, anyone, that will go out into the land and proclaim his gospel. Amen? Amen. Let me tell you what he said in Chronicles. He said, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro the whole earth, seeking whose heart is sincere towards him, that he may show himself strong on his behalf. Amen? Amen. So he didn't care whether the person was black, did he? He didn't care whether you were an Israelite or whatever you were. He said, if you'll show yourself sincere, then I'll show myself strong on your behalf. So if there's a problem in our community, all we have to do, and it sounds simplistic, but the truth is God is faithful. And so all we have to do is have the sincerity of heart and the courage to go out and believe God to do what it is he said he would do. But are we sincere? See, that's the first thing you got to ask yourself. When we see a condition in our community that's not changing, don't complain. Look in the mirror. Don't, don't complain. Don't go pointing the finger at pastor. Don't go talking about what Amos O'Neill ain't doing and the city councilman ain't doing. Don't go talking about what the school teacher ain't doing. What are you doing? Am I sincere? Am I sincere? Because he said he's going to anyone that's sincere and he'll show himself strong on his behalf. So if he's not showing himself strong on my behalf, I'm the problem. Amen? Amen. It ain't the problem around me. I'm the problem. And that's why we're here today so we can solve the problem. Amen? Amen. So I have to rededicate or dedicate my sister. We're in different places, some of us. Some of us have been professing faith for 20 years and are still in the same place. Some of us are professing faith for two years. Some of us have yet 
to come into faith. It doesn't make anybody better than anybody. But what that means is we're just in different places. But wherever place that we're in, we have to come to terms with God today. Amen? Amen. And before we leave here today, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking for each and every one of us to make a commitment to God. Amen? Amen. To make a commitment that we're going to leave out and we're going to make a difference in our community. We're going to be sincere and we're going to show the world that God is willing to show himself strong on our behalf. Amen. Show himself strong on our behalf so that he can save our children. So, you know, Amos O'Neill said something that made a lot of sense to me. He said, you know, if you're the head of our household, and it's true, if you're the head of your household, you're not going to allow anybody to come into your house and do whatever they want to do. You're not going to let somebody just kick your doors in, take your family, take your kitchen, you know, take whatever they want to take. You're going to do everything that's in you to stop them. Then how is it that we don't do the same thing in our communities? The Bible said that are ye not gods? What is he saying? He's saying that we as believers have been put and anointed in a certain place in this world so that we can be like unto God in the moral example that we're supposed to be setting to the unbelieving world. In other words, we're supposed to be the head of the household, the head of the world in the context that God is the head, Jesus Christ head over us, but we the head over the unbelieving world. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are we taking our position as the head? That's what Amos is asking. So we have to begin to dedicate ourselves and say, I'm going to let go of some things. Now, step two, follow through unto a completion. In other words, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Amen? Amen. So we can all talk about when I used to do something, but are you still doing it? Back in the day, I used to do this, but what are you doing today? Amen. Man, I used to go to church. I know, well, what are you doing now? Well, man, I used to, well, brother, I used to, well, what are we doing now? We have to complete the process, or as Paul said, we have to run the race unto a finish. Amen? So we have to begin, first of all, how do we do that? In Joshua 1 8. Now, Joshua, I don't, know how, I don't know how, I don't know if everybody knows the story of Joshua, but it's a very interesting story. I use that story, in fact, as a motivation for my life day in and day out. Why? Because God gave Joshua the formula for success. Joshua was getting ready to step into some pretty big shoes. You know, he was getting ready to step into some pretty, pretty big shoes. Moses has, was used by God to bring the people out of bondage. Amen? Amen? Moses was used by God to part the Red Sea. Moses, people see Moses used by God to do things that have been unprecedented in the human history map. So here comes Joshua. Now, I know Joshua must have been thinking, well, what in the world am I supposed to do then? And God told Joshua, Joshua, all to be strong and of good faith and of good courage. But then he gave him a, a formula for success, and that applies to us today. He said, Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate therein, day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. And then, and only then, not before, will you make your way prosperous. And then you shall have good success. So within that one scripture, we see a whole list of conditions. I mean, you heard me say earlier that God won't change our conditions until we first change ourselves. Amen. Now, if you want God to heal your land, you're going to have to change yourself. Right, right. If you want God to begin giving us the power and motivating our young people, you're going to have to change yourself. Amen. If you want God to clean up your home, yeah. you're going to have to change yourself. Amen. Amen. Amen? Well, how do I change myself? In what way do I change myself? He told Joshua, the first thing is, he said, meditate on my word. But the first thing he said, in fact, he said, my word, let this book of the law should not depart from your mouth. In other words, watch your speech. 